A pair of animated characters I've always found immensely appealing are Wallace and Gromit. Created by Nick Park, they have grown into cultural icons with their genuinely endearing personalities, the immense creativity of their adventures, and that specific brand of British humor. They first began life when Park was at film school and putting together a stop-motion animated short, which would eventually become a grand day out. Park had the idea of a man who builds a rocket to the moon in his house, which resulted in the creation of Wallace. Wanting to pair him up with someone, Park originally designed a cat, but when creating the plasticine model, he ended up making a dog instead. He was named Gromit, after a type of ring used in clothing, electronics, and other things, because he liked the sound of the word. He was originally supposed to have a voice, but Park felt the character's facial expressions already said so much. For the voice of Wallace, he contacted Peter Salas, not expecting him to accept, and then was shocked when he said yes. Salas's voice and the enthusiasm he brought to Wallace would thus become a key part of the character. Nick Park's original story for Grandy Out was a lot more ambitious, but then had to be pared down when it became apparent it would take a million years to actually finish it. When he was hired by Ardman, they let him continue working on the film in between projects. Released in 1989, Nick Park's talent was immediately apparent, as was how appealing Wallace and Gromit were. Their personalities are properly established, with Wallace as the eccentric inventor and Gromit as the good friend always looking out for him. Wallace's love of cheese and crackers was a focal point of the short, driving the storyline of them going to the moon to get some cheese. Park came up with so many clever visual gags and other funny pieces of writing, and in addition to Wallace and Gromit, even gave a fully-fledged personality to the robot living alone on the moon. Even though Park largely animated the film by himself, with some help from others, it's remarkable how cinematic this small film made for only 11,000 pounds was. Scenes like the moon liftoff are directed with the same level of excitement that someone like Spielberg might bring to a movie. A particularly important ingredient was the music by Julian Nott. He knew when to make scenes thrilling and when to go for comedy, and there was, of course, his incredibly catchy and memorable main theme. I genuinely mean it when I say that the Wallace and Gromit theme is one of my favorite pieces of music ever written. It captures so much the humor and joy of these characters, and even playing just the first few notes will lead to instant recognition for most people. When A Grandy Out first played at film festivals and aired on Channel 4 in the UK, I don't think Nick Park or Ardeman expected just how big of a sensation these two characters would end up becoming. Park would even receive an Oscar nomination for Grandy Out, but lost to some very strong competition, himself, for the hilarious Creature Comforts. Unsurprisingly, there was a lot of demand for another Wallace and Gromit adventure, and so in 1993 came The Wrong Trousers. With an increased budget, Park was able to go to even greater heights and create a story that cleverly mixed humor and thrills. Wallace's penchant for inventing becomes a central part of the plot as he builds robotic trousers and then things get really wild when a penguin rents a room. Like he did with their previous short, Park brought a cinematic sensibility as Feathers McGraw concocts his plan and we have scenes like Wallace and the trousers breaking into a museum. The highlight of the short is the train chase as Gromit quickly lays down tracks at top speed, all while Julian Knott composes a fitting piece. The wrong trousers expands on Wallace and Gromit's relationship and how the former's inventions can lead to a lot of trouble. Feathers is also a really creative villain, as despite his lack of facial expressions, he nonetheless has a lot of character to him and becomes a formidable opponent to our two heroes. The Wrong Trousers has always been my favorite Wallace and Gromit production thanks to its winning humor, its excellent villain, the wonderful interactions between the leads, and the brilliantly constructed action. And I'm not the only one to feel this way, as it became another big success for the duo, getting big ratings when it aired on BBC2 and winning the Oscar for Best Animated Short. It would take only two years for the next Wallace Gromit short to arrive when Nick Park directed A Close Shave. This would expand their world even further as they open a window cleaning business. Wallace falls in love with the owner of a wool shop, and then Gromit gets entangled and framed in a sheep napping plot. Budgeted over a million pounds, Park directed even more excellent action sequences, including a moment where Gromit flies around in a little airplane. A scene that has always stood out to me is when they set off on their window cleaning assignment and Wallace goes through an entire Rube Goldberg machine just to get ready. It's such a brilliantly devised sequence, an example of Nick Park's incredible imagination and a neat homage to Thunderbirds. The artist at Artman also filled the screen with a whole bunch of sheep, which I imagine must have been quite a challenge for the animators. The main villain, Preston, proves to be a tough one as we see the machinations of his evil plot be revealed. A close shave would also mark the introduction of Sean the Sheep, an adorable character who would of course go on to live a life of his own outside of Wallace and Gromit. Nick Park did a great job of mixing the humor with some of the darker tone in this short and taking things to the next level with the story. Much like the wrong trousers, a close shave shows that he's not interested in keeping his stop motion animation simple and is willing to take it to grand and epic heights. Thus, this would continue the character's winning streak, taking home yet another Oscar. The popularity of the characters would especially skyrocket following a close shave, with them becoming beloved around the world. 
Wallace and Gromit would become especially big in Japan, with Hayao Miyazaki among their admirers. A special Artman exhibit even opened at the Studio Ghibli Museum. Probably the most heartwarming story involving Wallace and Gromit isn't even from their films. Wallace's favorite cheese is Wensleydale, which Nick Park chose because he thought it would look amusing to see him say that with his toothy grin. Sadly, the company responsible for producing Wensleydale was having financial difficulties and was on the brink of shutting down. However, thanks to the popularity of Wallace and Gromit, sales of the cheese skyrocketed and the Wensleydale Creamery was saved. Ardwin received many offers from American companies to buy the rights to Wallace and Gromit or do something with them, but the studio has always been fiercely independent and is very protective of the characters created there. Even Disney made an offer and was declined. Eventually, Jeffrey Katzenberg was able to convince Ardman to sign a multi-picture deal with DreamWorks with the hope that one of those projects could be a Wallace and Gromit movie. But before that, they appeared in a couple of quick shorts titled Cracking Contraptions. Premiering on BBC One, they involved Wallace building a bunch of inventions to make life easier, but of course shenanigans ensue and things usually end up going wrong for These were very funny little bite-sized shorts that managed to nicely condense the Wallace and Gromit humor down to only a few minutes, and the result provided plenty of enjoyment. Finally, the duo would appear in their first feature film in 2005 with The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Inspired by Hammer Horror films, the filmmakers came up with a clever storyline involving rabbits and in particular a giant one going around and eating vegetables. The feature-length format led Park and his co-director Steve Box to really expand the town while Scromit live in and bring in all sorts of fun new characters like a crazed vicar and a pompous hunter. The movie was filled with plenty of hilarious multi-layer jokes, often centered on wordplay and puns, and usually involving vegetables. Oh, and there's some cheese-related humor there for added measure. Despite the universal appeal of Wallace and Gromit, Drummerick still wanted a few things Americanized, like specific words, so the US and UK cuts are slightly different. One thing Park absolutely put his foot down was the suggestion that a big-name celebrity voice Wallace instead of Peter Salas. Eventually, a compromise was reached, and Ray Fiennes was cast as the aforementioned hunter, Victor Quartermain, and Helen Bonham Carter voiced Wallace's new potential love interest. As a longtime Wallace and Gromit fan, I was absolutely hyped to see their first big-screen movie and made it a point to see it on opening weekend. The movie did not disappoint, and it's one I continued to return to multiple times. Curse the Were-Rabbit even makes for a fitting Halloween movie with the way Park and Box utilize the familiar horror movie ingredients, but in their own fun way. The movie was another critical and commercial success, although DreamWorks was reportedly underwhelmed by the movie's North American box office numbers. It would also lead to Park winning his fourth Oscar, this time for Best Animated Feature. Three years later, Wallace Gromit would return to a half-hour running time with A Matter of Low from Death. This time, they have their own baking business, and Wallace gets wooed by a former ad girl for a baking company. This was another delightful short, and Gromit even gets his own love interest this time, as they deal with someone going around getting rid of the bakers in town. Several humorous gags abound, especially when Gromit tries his best to save Wallace from the various death traps being sent his way. One of the best things about these films is the friendship between the two, and even though Wallace can be a bit dense at times and ignores Gromit's frequent warnings, they often stick together by the end. Wallace and Gromit would host an educational series for the BBC titled World of Invention. This was nobly the last time that Peter Salas would voice Wallace as health issues led him to retire from acting. Ben Whitehead had already been voicing Wallace in video games and commercials at that point, and would then become his new official voice. Salas passed away in 2017 at the age of 96, and many assumed that meant Nick Park would stop making Wallace and Gromit projects, as he himself expressed uncertainty of whether he could do it without the man who kindly accepted the young film student's offer so many years ago. However, it was then announced a new Wallace and Gromit movie was in the works for Netflix. Set for release this December, entitled Vengeance Most Foul, it will see the return of Feathers and McGraw. For the most part, each Wallace and Gromit film has been largely self-contained, with only the occasional reference to previous adventures. So this was definitely a surprise, but as someone who's loved all the films, I'm of course excited for this one. These characters mean so much to me, and I would watch the videos of their first three shorts over and over again. To say I'm a Wallace and Gromit fan is a bit of an understatement. Nick Park created two of the most endearing, wonderful anime characters ever, who have absolutely earned their place in animation history. They are the crown jewels of Ardman, who have brought so much joy over the past 35 years. Thank you so much, Nick Park, and everyone involved with Wallace and Gromit for the incredible projects you've created, and that I'm sure will continue to delight for many years. See you next time.